In this video, I want to talk about sampling distributions and the properties of sampling distributions. Well, first of all, what is a sampling distribution? Well, I'm going to use this applet that you can find on the internet. And this right here at the top is my population. Okay, my population, uh, uh, the data that's in my pop comes from my population is bell shaped and symmetric. It's normal shaped. And from this population, I could take a sample. So I'm going to take a sample of sample of five, and I'm going to find the average of that sample. So if I click this button here, it's going to find one, two, three, four, five different values from this population. And then the applet finds the average of those five and puts it into a new distribution. So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to find another one, two, three, four, five. There are five data points or data values from the population. The mean is of those five is found and you get and it gets put into this distribution again. And that just continues. I take a sample size of five, find the mean, put it into my new, new distribution. I take another sample size of five, find the mean of that and put that into my distribution. Now I could continue to do this. I'm going to go a little bit faster. I'm going to find five more and then five more samples and five more samples. So I'm just taking a sample of five, one, two, three, four, five data points, finding the average and putting it into a new, new distribution. Now I'm going to make a big jump here and I'm going to have the computer find 1,000 samples of size five. The computer will then find the average of each of those 1,000 samples and put the average or the mean of those 1,000 samples into this blue distribution down here at the bottom. I'm just going to click one button and technology is pretty awesome. It does it all very, very quickly. Right there it is. Now notice what's starting to happen. This blue distribution is the, is the distribution of the averages of my samples. In other words, it is the distribution of my sample means. That's a big thing to keep in mind. This, what we're talking about today, is a sampling distribution for means. So I'm finding a, I'm taking samples from a population. I'm finding the average of each one of those samples, and I'm putting those averages into their own distribution. That's what a sampling distribution is. So I could do it again. In fact, I could change this and make this a skewed distribution. Let's say that my population had a skewed distribution, all of this data. Well, watch what happens here. I'm again, I think this time I'll change my sample size to 10. So I'm going to take a sample size of 10 from this population and <clears throat> find the average of those 10 data points. So here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. I'm going to find the average of those 10 and put it into this new distribution. I'll do it one more time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The average of those 10 data values from the population gets put into the new distribution, the, distribu the sampling distribution for means. Now let's do five at a time. Let's do five more, and I'm going to jump up to a thousand, and then I'm going to jump up and have the computer find 10,000 different samples and find the means of all 10,000 and put those 10,000 means into this distribution. <clears throat> there we go. And notice what is happening. This sampling distribution, or the distribution of the sample means, is bell-shaped and symmetric. So my, my parent population, the population that, this, that these samples come from, is not bell-shaped. It's skewed. But the distribution of the sample means is bell-shaped and symmetric. I could try this again. Let's clear everything. And what if I had one more? Let's go, I'm just going to make up my own population. Okay, there's my population distribution. Okay, it just is, it's crazy. Uh, you know what, I'll, I'll make a new one. I'll, I'll make it even bimodal. Okay, it's, it's, it's crazy. But if I take a sample size, let's do a sample size of 16 this time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Find the average of those 16, put it in there. Now, I think I've shown this enough, so I'm going to go ahead and just animate one more. Again, I'm taking a sample size of 16, 
finding the average of those 16, putting it into my new distribution of the sample means. I'll do five more, five more. Let's jump up to 1,000 more samples and even 10,000 more samples. Notice once again, even though the population was bi or trimodal and it's, it's not even bell-shaped or symmetric, it's all over the place, the distribution of the sample means is bell-shaped and symmetric. So that leads me to the properties. So the properties for a sampling distribution for means, when you find a take a bunch of different samples, find the average of those samples, and put the averages or the means of those samples into a distribution, two things happen. One of them is this. The mean of the sample means is equal to the population mean. So if I were to go back, let's look at my distribution again, Let's make this one a, let's go back to a, let's go to a skewed distribution. If I were to find, <clears throat> excuse me, the mean or the middle, remember, in a bell-shaped and symmetric curve, the mean is always in the middle. The mean of this sampling distribution is equal to the population mean. Okay, the population mean in this skewed distribution is right about here. I hope you can see my mouse. And the mean of the sampling distribution is also in the same spot. These number lines are equal to each other. What if I go to my normal distribution? If my population is normal, this right here, the center of this normal distribution is the mean. So if I were to find a sampling distribution, the mean of the sampling distribution, which is in the middle because it's bell-shaped and symmetric, is equal to the mean of the population. No matter where the population mean is, so in this case, this little blue, it's probably hard for you to see, but right about here is the mean of my population. So once again, if I have the computer quickly put together a sampling distribution, the mean of the sampling distribution is in the same spot as the population mean. So that's why I can say that the mean of the sampling distribution, and the notation looks like this, mu with a little x bar subscript, is equal to mu by itself. Mu with the x bar subscript is the sample is the mean of the sampling distribution and mu by itself is the population mean so once again the mean of the sample means or the mean of the pop of the sampling distribution is equal to the population mean now the other thing that we should know about a distribution if we know the mean is the standard deviation so let me erase this here and for a sampling distribution the standard deviation of a sampling distribution is equal to the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. I'll go ahead and write that formula. It would look like this. The standard deviation of the sampling distribution, notice I'm using x bar as my subscript, is equal to the population standard deviation, sigma, divided by the square root of your sample size. Now, there's a special name for this, and that's what the last thing that I'll tell you in this video is. The standard deviation of the sampling distribution, which is this formula that, that we just found right here, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution is sometimes called, in fact, it should be called, the standard error of the mean. So standard error is the standard deviation of a sampling distribution. Now you're probably going to want to use, want to watch some of my other videos that have some examples of how to use these properties. What is this good for? How can I use a sampling distribution? In this video, I just told you about the properties of a sampling distribution and what a sampling distribution is. But um, how to use it will come in some of my other videos.